Welcome to jobskillshare.com. Let me go to the main site. Uh, let's go back here. Here. Okay. So here's the main site. So if you're new from YouTube, this is a tool video that I'm going to make today. So if you're just coming from a new place, the first time, click on this course, register first, uh, and then once you register, you log into our system you will get to this course uh, here directly or you can go to the main page and click on help desk support course and then click on learning path and this video is going to go under networking tools and the video will be named SCCM client and I will tell you guys in a second what it is what how is it helpful for a help desk person so this is going to go under uh, tools right here networking tools and this is going to be under this section it's going to say SCCM client so what is SCCM client uh, let's go back because I already installed it and SCCM client if you go to Google I'm just gonna go back okay if you go to Google and type SCCM client center click on this first link right here it will take you to this uh, page and it will tell you exactly what it is the tool is designed for IT professionals to troubleshoot SMS SCCM client and okay so let me just explain it in my way for help those people what this tool is about is when okay first thing you need to find out as a help desk that do you do does your company have a SCCM server installed on your uh, in, a, in in your environment because without it it's not it's not for people who uh, who don't have a server installed? I mean, you can use it, but there's a lot of functionality. It won't work. So you just need to find out exactly, and you will find out because if you're a help desk, somebody will teach you how to use a server part of it, which is kind of a little bit different than this. It's more like you know, I had a, I just went through another video in a deployment section where SCCM software is used for deployment. So that's the same sort of stuff that they will have that server installed. And then if you, once you find out that your company does have the server installed somewhere, you can use this client on that on your machine and then you can uh, take care of some of the calls that I'm going to tell you guys and uh, the, some of the things that I do with SCCM client. So it's a free tool. You go online, you install it, you run it, and you know that your server, your system have that server. It will connect automatically to that server. So what you do is you go and click on this link right here, the download zip file, install it. You will see the zip file extracted, and then run whatever zip file you're running. So on my system, I have it uh, SCCM here. I extracted it, and then I went for 86 public dot MSI which is my system is 32 bit system so I'm using 86 if you're using 32 uh, 64 bit you're going to be using this one right here so once you install it you can then click on SCCM SCCM client you just just type that on the bottom and this will come up and save this on your desktop somewhere you can then easily access then you will see this prompt click OK alright so now you see this right here um, that nothing will it'll say disconnected right now public version everything is cool so what you do is just go ahead and click on connect and it is going to connect right now it is saying access deny which is fine no problem we're gonna test it on a, another test machine that I have um, say B Heather one W soon and I'm going to say connect to that one and let's see what happened now see it's connected I tell you guys what I can't show you this information but MP should be your server uh, name okay so MP should be your server name here and then you're connected to that server automatically and boom after this you can do so much right now and I can tell you guys what can you do so let's say for example this is a test machine on my system there's a person his name is D Heather and now uh, he called me and he's telling me that my flash uh, I'm going to the internet browser and uh, it's telling me that you need to update your flash um, so while when when, when I have SCCM it's it is a, the quickest way that I find out okay does he does he need to uh, does he need to update for flash I can do that pretty quickly now once I have SCCM I can find out first I can just go there and click on this inventory actions and then click on add and remove programs 
and what's going to happen I'm going to click on get air remove programs and boom I'm going to see all these programs here so then I can come down here and see Adobe Flash right here and then I can go on the right side let me see okay so I can go on the right side and find out exactly what version they have so in this computer I have it uh, updated one so now I can either push an update and update it again or um, I can do a lot of stuff with it so for example Rusty I have 11 um, flash active X I'm going to uninstall it just for fun I want to uninstall it because this person might not even have flash in on their browser so they might see the same um, uh, error that oh you don't have flash you need to get a flash first so let's say now you see that the flash active X gone I'm going to use another tool and push it to this um, um, this um, user and see if they have flash then and then they can try the site again okay so I just opened PDQ deploy which is not the part of this video but I'm just going to show you guys something uh, that it works like you know this is how I solve these little tiny money problems that I don't have to go to the computer or ask username password and you know annoy them and so I just do it from here and kind of make it easy um, so let's say this is a flash that I want to push to that computer right now um, I think this is the one yes Firefox da, 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 da. what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this one ie one I wanna make sure I so let's see if we can do that so I click on deploy deploy once I'm going to put that computer name in there do you have the one w7 and then I'm going to deploy it copying right now and it's running 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 successful so I can go back now to SCCM and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect and then go back to my inventory get application get a add and remove programs and now I can see Adobe Flash Player is installed right now it tells me when it was installed right here 2013 11.04 which is this time today and it tells me that version so now I can tell the user please go ahead and retry the site or um, uh, refresh your browser and their problem should be fixed okay this is one way I can do quick stuff like you guys saw me uninstalling from here another great feature so if you want to uninstall a software and, and re uh, uh, deploy a uh, brand updated versions you can do from here easily without going to complex commands and all that because it has built-in uh, commands in there so you just do that and it will do the rest for you you can repair application on it you can click on the repair thing and repair almost any application if it has that ability okay so that's one thing you can do with this pretty great stuff other thing you can do with this which is um, other than uh, checking inventory and do all that the best other thing is they're running uh, processes and services now processes are used let's say for example you open Outlook so for example let's go ahead and open Outlook on this machine um, or uh, let's do this actually not on this machine because that's not going to be a helpful one so for example this D header one is another computer right now we know that we're gonna go and see what's running on that computer and we do processes and you see all these processes are running on that machine right now but one of the things that I want to tell you guys why would you guys want to do deal with processes sometime what happen is some application get hung or uh, you will get a call like for example somebody opened Outlook one day and they clicked on it a few times and it, the Outlook didn't came up on the screen so it was basically hung something got wrong into it so what you do is you usually go to task manager right on their machine you will go to task manager and then you would go to processes here and this is the same thing so now you you are actually you're actually uh, saving that whole steps like let's say they're on the first floor you don't have to go all the way back down to just go and do right click and test and then go to processes right if you can do this from here how cool is that you can just click double click here connect processes now you're doing the same thing you're going to be doing here on their machine you're, you're you're doing the same thing remotely right now okay so I'm going to cancel this and then you go ahead and find out outlook.exe oh it's not coming up you tell the user okay you don't have anything to say 
like you know you have everything saved right now I'm gonna go ahead and do my work they say okay go ahead I have nothing to save you just right click and kill that process tell them reopen up Outlook again without restarting they should be able to uh, open Outlook or any other this was example I mean I'm not saying just Outlook is gonna have that issue you can have any other software doing the same issue and then you can do this process so another way to get to the process is that way okay so services another great uh, tool for uh, uh, administrators, uh, server administrators, because we usually deal with uh, these sites. Like you know, um, most of the uh, most of the servers run sites or some other programs. So you and then the most of them, most of it, most of the time, you will deal with the services. And sometimes you need to restart the service. Sometimes you need to stop the service. Sometimes you need to automate the service. So from here, you can do the same thing. You can do stop the service. You can restart the service. You can disable it on the startup and those kind of stuff. This is also pretty great stuff that you can do. What other calls can you get on 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 this thing? Usually, these are the calls that I deal with. For example, somebody call me for Adobe, Java, anything like that. I'm going to come here first, see what version they have. If it's if it's not up to date, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the PDQ deploy and deploy the uh, software uh, to it. And then I'm gonna come double check here, do the uh, get the software again and see the version. Oh, it's updated. Okay, so that's cool. Other things you can do is you can click on the tool and then you can either ping the host. So if I'm going to ping this host right now, I'll click on it and it will start the command right now. It's pinging. And you see that zero percent loss mean that's it's working, okay? So now you go ahead and what other things you can do is you can go to the management of that computer. I can click on this right here, uh, and you can do that from Windows too, but it just makes it easier to do it from here too. So that will connect to the management of this computer, so I can add the users, I can make a user admin and stuff like that. Um, so this is right now adding in right now. We'll see right now in a bit alright so then you see this right here it's connected to the management of that computer uh, to D Heather 1W7 and now I can go ahead and add a user in there make people administrator and all that stuff so I can uh, close this and then what else can I do I can right click here uh, other things you might not be using it too much that's something I don't think you're going to be using this stuff. Um, I use PDQ inventory or other pro like Spiceworks for that, like hardware inventory and all that. So mainly what I just showed you guys: restart services, kill the processes, uninstall some softwares from uh, directly from here. Check the versions. What's what's installed in there? It do, does it need updates? And quickly do things like that. So it's very small software, but extremely powerful. And uh, make sure you test it on a test machine first before you um, um, start playing it on a real machine. Hopefully you guys learned something from it. If you guys do, comment on the bottom. Uh, I'll have a uh, section. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.